Hello everyone, welcome to AMCOD and this is the continuation of our previous lecture where we have discussed architecture of a data warehousing where we have seen the business analysis framework in detail and we have also discussed the three tier data warehouse architecture with their each components in details. Also we have seen various data warehouse models such as virtual warehouse, data mart and the enterprise warehouse with some simple examples. So for this lecture our first point is load manager. So this is one component of a data warehouse. So you might ask what really is a load manager? So this component performs the operations which is required to extract and load the data into the data warehouse. So the size and complexity of the load manager varies according to the requirements of your organization. So the load manager performs some specific functions. So the first one is extract the data from the source system. This is the first step. The next one is fast load the data which is extracted from the source system and put it into the temporary data store. So you might ask what is a fast load? So we will discuss in brief in just a minute. And the next function which performs by the load manager is the simple transformation into the structure which is similar to the one in the data warehouse. So this basic functions is operated by the load manager. So now we will discuss each function in detail. What happens in the extraction process? So the data is extracted from the operational database or the external information providers. Gateways is the application programs that are used to extract this data. It is supported by the underlying DBMS or we can say database management systems and allows the client programs to generate SQL to be executed at the server. So there are different examples of a gateway which are open database connection which is ODBC, Java database connection which is JDBC. So these are some examples of a gateway. So the next step is fast load. So what do you mean by fast load? So in order to minimize the total load window, the data needs to be loaded into the warehouse in the fastest possible time to improve the process efficiency. So the transformation affects the speed of the data processing. So it is more effective to load the data into relational database prior to applying some transformation and checks. So the gateway technology proves to be not suitable since they do not perform well when the large data is involved. And our last function is simple transformations. So while loading, it may be required to perform the simple transformation. After this has been completed, we are in a position to do the complex checks. Suppose we are loading the sales and transaction data that we need to perform some check. For this, we have to strip out all the columns that are not required within the warehouse. And we will convert all the values to the required data types. So this was all about load manager. So our next topic is warehouse manager. So the warehouse manager is responsible for the warehouse management processes. It consists of a third party system software such as C programs and a shell scripting. The size and complexity of a warehouse manager varies between the specific solutions. So it also depends on the requirement of a data warehouse. So the warehouse manager architecture includes the controlling process, stored procedures, backup and recovery tool and the SQL scripts. So there are various operations which are performed by the warehouse manager. So the first one is a warehouse manager analyzes the data to perform consistency and referential integrity checks. Its next function is creates indexes, business views and partition views against the base data. So these business views will be consumed by the users for doing the analysis and checks. The next function is it generates new aggregations and updates the existing aggregation. And also it generates the normalization which you are already familiar with. It also transforms and merges the source data into the published data warehouse. And its last function is it backups the data in the data warehouse and also performs the archiving operation. So you have to remember one thing clearly. 
a data warehouse manager also analyzes query profiles to determine the indexes and aggregations which will be appropriate our next component is query manager so the query manager is responsible for directing the queries to the suitable tables so by directing the queries to appropriate tables the speed of querying and response generation can be increased so it will definitely improve the performance of the queries so the query manager is responsible for scheduling and execution of the queries which are proposed by the user according to the user's requirements query manager schedules the appropriate time for the query execution so the query manager involves different components which are given in this figure these are query direction query management tool query scheduling via the rdbms or a query scheduling via a third party softwares as you can see in this figure our next topic is detailed information so what do you mean by detailed information so detailed information is not kept online rather than it is aggregated to the next level of detail and then archived to the tape so the detailed information is a part of data warehouse which keeps the detailed information in the starflex schema so what is starflex schema we will discuss in the upcoming tutorials so it is loaded into the data warehouse to supplement the aggregated data so this diagram shows a pictorial impression of where the detailed information is stored and how it is used so the important thing is if the detailed information is held offline to minimize the disk storage we should make sure that the data has been extracted cleaned up and transformed into the starflex schema before it is archived and our last topic in the data warehouse architecture is summary information so the summary information is a part of data warehouse that stores the predefined aggregation so these aggregations are generated by the warehouse manager so the summary information must be treated as a transient it changes on the go in order to respond to the changing query profiles so as the query profile changes so the summary information should also change so these are some key points you have to remember about the summary information so the summary information speed of the performance of common queries it also controls the operational cost and it needs to be updated whenever the new data is loaded into the data warehouse so this is all about summary information so in this lecture we have seen what is a load manager and what it is significance we have also seen the warehouse manager query manager as well as we have covered the detailed information and the summary information in brief so if you like this video please subscribe to amcode and ring the notification bell to get the latest updates thanks for watching